Oh no, he's right there. Hey everyone, Henry Yellow here. Welcome back. Today we are going to watch Hitchcock's North by Northwest. This is a spy thriller film. So I guess it's something like, like James Bond. Uh, even though I mentioned James Bond, I've actually never watched a James Bond movie before. No, I've watched one James Bond movie before, but I don't even remember what it's about anymore because I watched it as a kid and it was on CD or DVD. And I cannot remember any of the plot anymore. It was too long ago. So yeah, I'll consider myself as having never ever watched a James Bond movie. Should I watch a James Bond movie? Let me know down in the comments if you would like me to watch James Bond and also let me know because I know James Bond there are a lot of sequels so let me know like which ones are good and in what order I should watch them and I could add them to my list. I can see that the music score for this movie was made by Bernard Herrmann so he's the same guy who did the music for Psycho, The Day the Earth Stood Still, Vertigo. So yeah, let's see what music he has in store for us. And also, I'm excited to see uh, what Hitchcock has in store for us for this movie because there was a really nice twist in Psycho and in Vertigo. So I'm excited to see like what this movie is going to be all about. Okay, nice little perspective by the lines. Oh, that's Alfred Hitchcock, isn't it? Send her a box of candy for Blount. Ten dollars. You know the kind. Each piece wrapped in gold paper. She'll like that. She'll think she's keeping money. Something for your sweet tooth, baby, and all your other sweet parts. I know, I know. He's a very busy man. I knew you were lying. Maggie, in the world of advertising, there's no such thing as a lie. There's only the expedient exaggeration. Yeah, that's advertising. And don't forget, call my mother right away. I won't. Oh, wait, Maggie, you can't call her. She's a missus. We got a little head start here, Mr. Thornhill. Oh, that won't last long. Starring Larry and Fanny, you may be slow in starting, but there's nobody faster coming down the home stretch. I told my secretary to call Mother, and I realized she won't be able to reach her where she is. George Perhaps if I sent her a telegram. Mr. George Kaplan. Boy. Kaplan. I've got to get off a wire immediately. Oh, they think he's Kaplan. Hey, wait a minute. What's that supposed to be? Cars waiting outside. You will walk between us saying nothing. What is this? A joke or something? Yes, a joke. We were laughing. Come. Oh no. Oh no. It's a misunderstanding, boys. Don't tell me where we're going. Surprise me. <laughs> Locked. Townsend. Who's Townsend? If this ever happens, my advice would be like clarify your identity immediately. Because once he goes in there, I think. They have to kill him for just witnessing stuff. Say to him, Kaplan. By the way, what are we having for dessert? Is there anyone in the library? No. You will wait here. Well, don't hurry. I'll catch up on my reading. Lester Townsend. A little more polished than the others. Oh, I'm so glad you're pleased, Mr. Townsend. Why was I brought here? Games? Must we? Oh, absolutely, we must. With such expert play acting, you make this very room a theater. Did you call me Kaplan? I know you're a man of many names, but I'm perfectly willing to accept your current choice. Roger Thornhill has never been anything else. Of course. Oh, no, he can't even clear his identity. I'd like you to tell me how much you know of our arrangements, how you've come by this information. Naturally, I don't expect to get this for nothing. Of course not. Townsend, you're making a serious mistake. This is not going to lead to a very happy conclusion, Mr. Kaplan. I'm not Kaplan. You're registered in room 796 of the Plaza Hotel in New York. In two days, you're due at the Ambassador East in Chicago. And then at the Sheraton Johnson Hotel in Rapid City, South Dakota. I don't suppose it would do any good to show you a wallet full of identification cards. They provide you with such good ones. Oh, yes, yeah, such realistic ones. I'd like a simple yes or no. Yes. A simple no. For the simple reason I simply don't know what you're talking about. Give oh, Mr. Kaplan man. a drink, Janet. The only way he can prove himself is if the real George Kaplan acts. Perfect. It'll be easier if you take this yourself. Otherwise, it'll be necessary for us to insist. You mean it's a whole cabinet of poison? <laughs> Maybe they're trying to induce alcohol poisoning. 
gonna make it look like an accident. Oh god, that's the worst case scenario when you, you can't even clarify your own identity and they're not gonna believe you. Wait, suddenly he's sober? <gasps> oh, I guess that was very careless of them. You'd think a bullet to the head would be a more guaranteed job done. Oh wait, yeah, I think there was a little bit of foreshadowing that he was a good drinker when he met with the Larry and the people. He said that he'll easily catch up with them in the drink. So yeah, clearly he's a good drinker. He can hold his own. <laughs> now he's gonna get speeding and driving under influence. But this way, they can't pursue him anymore because the police will keep him safe. They try to kill me. He, he won't listen to me. Somebody call the police. Come on. Come on now. No one's gonna believe a drunk. Sit down. I don't want to sit. I'm perfectly all right, see? The car was just reported stolen. I got a call somewhere. Where's the phone? What if you're 8198? Well, am I a telephone operator? Yeah. Oh, mother? Mother, this is your son, Roger Thornhill. No, mother, I have not been drinking. No. No, these two men, they poured a whole bottle of bourbon into me. Get my lawyer right away and come out and bail me out. Tomorrow morning, tell her. Tomorrow morning, he says. She wants to know who says. Sergeant Emil Klinger. Emil? That was mother. Is your man, doctor? Is he gonna walk a straight... <laughs> he can't walk that straight line. Stick out your tongue and say, ah. You better move back. Ah! <laughs> Have you been drinking? How much would you say that you drank? A whole bottle. Do you know him to be a reasonable man? Absolutely. <laughs> Mother. And you. I want this turned over to the county detectives for investigation. He even brought his mother. Is Mr. Townsend at home? No, I'm sorry. He's left for the day, sir. Mrs. Townsend? Here's the sofa where they held me down. They spilled bourbon all over it. Well, they must have cleaned them mm -hmm. off. Scotch gin vodka. Ooh. They cleaned it up. Roger, dear, we were so worried about you. Mr. Thornhill was picked up last night driving while under the influence of alcohol in a stolen car. You didn't borrow Laura's Mercedes. No, I didn't borrow Laura's Mercedes. Roger was a bit tipsy when he arrived here by cab for dinner. They prepared an entire story. What a performance. Where's her husband? He's the one you should be questioning. The United Nations. He's addressing the General Assembly this afternoon. Do you mean you're not going to do any more about this? Roger, pay the two dollars. I'm sure that's not Mrs. Townsend. Hello, operator. Have you got a George Kaplan staying here? Room 796? Wait, I thought they can't reveal the client's info. Well, that's odd. He hasn't answered his telephone in two days. He's escaped already. Go to the desk and get the key to 796. Don't be ridiculous. 50? Roger, you are disgraceful. Mm -hmm. No, he's just putting himself back in trouble again. He should just stay away from room 796. Will you want me to be changing your bed, sir? The bed doesn't seem like it's been slept in, and I was just wondering if I ought to go on changing the linens. Uh, she seemed to think I'm Kaplan. Look who's here. Who? Where? Our friend who's assembling the General Assembly this afternoon. Roger, I think we should go. Yeah, you shouldn't have come here. Do you know who I am? Sure, you're Mr. Kaplan. Uh, when did uh, when did you first see me? In the hall, a couple of minutes ago. Don't you remember? Well, then how do you know I am Mr. Kaplan? This is room 796, isn't it? No, he has witnesses that can confirm he's Mr. Kaplan. At what time did I give you that suit? You called on, on the phone and described the suit to me and said it would be hanging in your closet, like you always do. Thanks. Oh, thank you. Nice to meet you, Mr. Kaplan. See, Kaplan is a very careful man. I'm beginning to think that no one in the hotel has actually seen Kaplan. Yeah. Hello. It's good to find you in, Mr. Kaplan. I'm not Mr. Kaplan. Of course not. You answer his telephone, you live in his hotel room, and yet you are not Mr. Kaplan. What did I tell you? That caller just came through. Was that an outside call or did it come from the lobby? Just a minute, sir. I'll see. My God, just get out of the room. 
told you, man, stay away from room 796. Just stay away from trouble. You gentlemen aren't really trying to kill my son, are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, gentlemen, please, ladies first. Come along, ladies. This couple must be pissed. Take me to the United Nations. Right. I'm being followed. Can you do anything about it? Yes, I can. Let's do it. Wow, what a taxi driver. Say, so, yes, no problem. I can shake off the tail. Hope he got tipped extra for that. Well, where is George Kaplan, anyway? Uh, where will I find Mr. Lester Townsend? Your name, please. My name? Yes, please. George Kaplan. Kaplan. George Kaplan. I think he's just making things really, really easy for the the real George Kaplan. The real Mr. Kaplan must be like, oh wow, somebody's assuming my identity and everybody's chasing after him, so I'm safe. Please call up the communications desk of the public lounge. This is Mr. Townsend. How do you do, Mr. Kaplan? This is Mr. Townsend. Yes, it is. Oh. Mr. Townsend, you're losing name code. That's right. That's strange. Well, I've been staying in my apartment here in town for the last month. But who are those people living in your house? What? The people. House is completely closed up. Just the gardener and his wife living in the grounds. Do you know this man? <sighs> Whoa. What a knife throw. Why did he go and grab the knife like that? Don't come any nearer. Get back. Now he's got his fingerprints on it. Oh my goodness, man. He... I mean, I can't blame him. He's not a spy. Roger Thornhill, Manhattan Advertising Executive. Apparently the poor sucker got mistaken for George Kaplan. And Dan's men must have grabbed him, tried to put him away. Who are these people? We do nothing. Our non-existent decoy, George Kaplan, created a divert suspicion from our actual agent. It's become a live decoy. Huh. They're the spies. We can't sit back calmly and wait to see who kills him first. We didn't invent our non-existent man. Establish elaborate behavior patterns for him. Move his prop belongings in and out of hotel rooms for our own private amusement. We make the slightest move to suggest that there is no such agent as George Kaplan. And our agent, working right under Van Damme's very nose, will immediately face suspicion and assassination. What if their agent is working with Van Damme? I called the plaza. Kaplan checked out. He went to the Hotel Ambassador East in Chicago. Kaplan doesn't exist. My fingerprints are on the knife. I wouldn't have a chance until I find George Kaplan, who obviously knows what this is all about. You'll never find him. There's no place to hide on a plane if anyone should recognize me. Well, you want me to jump off a moving plane? <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much, mother. I bet his mother said yes. And all this because those two goons mistook him for George Kaplan when he called for the boy. What time is the next train? You're in a hurry, huh? Something wrong with your eye? Yes, they're sensitive to questions. Will you call them? <laughs> He's at window 15, upper level. You're in luck, mistake. Ah. Oh. Okay, he's pretty smart about that. Oh, I was expecting one of those old kind of locomotive trains. He went that way. I think he got off. Seven parking tickets. Oh. Well, he's lucky she decided to cover for him. What? They're not gonna check the toilet? Good evening, sir. One, please. Well, here we are again. Yes. Do you recommend anything? The brook trout. I know, I look vaguely familiar. Yes. But it's something about my face. It's a nice face. Oh, you're that type. What type? Honest. Not really. Think how lucky I am to have been seated here. I tipped the steward five dollars to seat you here if you should come in. Hmm. She can't be the agent, right? You're Roger Thornhill of Madison Avenue, and you're wanted for murder on every front page in America. I won't say a word. How come? I told you. It's a nice face. That's my trademark. Rot. Roger O. Thornhill, drawing room E, car 3901. And you wouldn't happen to have an extra pair of pajamas, would you? Oh, there's the police there. I wouldn't order any dessert if I were you. I get the message. That isn't exactly what I meant. 
They're gonna check the train. Just lie still. You got the olive oil? I'm gonna be packed in olive oil. I'm not gonna be a sardine. <laughs> Squeezed himself into the luggage compartment. Your name, please? Eve Candle. There was a man at your table tonight in the dining car. He's wanted for murder. Good heavens, no. Your waiter said that you were getting along pretty good with this Thornhill fellow. Oh, is that his name, Thornhill? He didn't tell me anything. If you happen to catch sight of him again, Miss... Uh... Kendall. Will you let us know? Still breathing? I'll hurry up and get me a snorkel. Oh, it broke. <laughs> tell me, why are you so good to me? Good question. You'll be picked up by the police the moment you show your face. Such a nice face, too. Can't let you get involved. Too dangerous. I'm a big girl. Yeah. And in all the right places, too. I mean, we've hardly met. That's right. Why would a random stranger be that kind to you? Just because of your looks when you're suspected to be a murderer? Nah. By this point, I'm 80% sure she's that agent. Oh, Porter. Don't bother with the washroom. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Porter. Thank you, ma'am. A tiny shaver. Well, that's pretty cute. Only one bed. Yes. You know what that means? It means you're going to sleep on the floor. <laughs> A message from the lady in 3901. What do I do with him in the morning? Oh, are you kidding me? She's not one of the spy agents? She's with Van Damme. Oh, man. Anything to report, Miss Kendall? Oh, Mr. Thornycroft? Born Hill. No, no, I'm awfully sorry. Well, I'm accustomed to having a load on, but what have you got in these bags? Bowling balls, naturally. Oh, naturally. How did she get this uniform, anyway? 9 10. 9 10? Well, he may have left his hotel room by now. Well, I'll call him for you as soon as we get inside the station. While I'm calling, you go change your clothes. So, does Van Damme still believe he is Kaplan, or do they already know that they've got the wrong guy and they're using him to hunt for Kaplan? Oh, he took his clothes. He bought his clothes. With a lot of money, it seems. <laughs> He's using the tiny shaver. Van Damme has an entire organization. Are they like terrorists? How did you get Kaplan? Yes, I've got it all written down for you. Very stop. Highway 41. No car. Mr. Kaplan said bus. He wants to be sure you're alone. We'll see each other again, won't we? Sometime, I'm sure. They're coming. May she fall in love with him? This is literally the middle of nowhere. I think the twist here would be that she's working for Van Damme, but she's also working for the spy agency. She's a double agent. Just a wild guess. supposed to be meeting someone here waiting for the bus do any minute oh that's funny well that plane's dusting crops where there ain't no crops the plane's dusting crops where there ain't no crops oh the plane's coming for him is it yep what are they trying to do though trying to run him over with a plane Ah, okay. Yep, if the plane fires now, it'll be very hard for him to dodge. The fact that they only fired him after they have gone past means the machine gun is installed at the back. Okay, good thinking. This is the only cover that he's got. Oh, it is a crop duster. That 
was a little too close, he could have backed up. What in the... Was the pilot blind or something? The tank might blow, people. Don't get too close. Poor guy. Oh, he made it all the way to the Ambassador East Hotel to find Kaplan. The Kaplan who doesn't exist. Checked out at 7.10 this morning. Left a forwarding address. Hotel Sheraton Johnson, Rapid City, South Dakota. 7.10? Well, how come I got a message from him at 9? Now he knows that Eve was lying. He knows she sent him there to get shot by the plane. Miss Eve Kendall is expecting me. She's in room four something or other. I've forgotten the number. Would you mind? Surprise? Yes. Now he's confused. How did it go today? Almost got killed. He didn't show up. Well, what are you going to do next? It may depend on you. To a long and lasting friendship. Meaning, from now on, I'm not going to let you out of my sight, sweetheart. Togetherness, you know what I mean? <laughs> Togetherness. I'll meet you. What's the address? Hmm. She's left-handed. All work and no play. Okay, she has a gun. I want you to do a, a favor for me. I want you to leave right now. Stay far away from me and don't come near me again. No questions asked? Yes. After dinner. No. After dinner, fair is fair. On one condition, that you let the hotel valet do something with the suit first. How quickly can you get a suit sponged and pressed? 20 minutes? Fine. What could a man do with his clothes off for 20 minutes? Couldn't you have taken an hour? You could always take a cold shower. Thank you. I think I'll take that cold shower after all. Good. Oh, she's gonna leave. Okay, he's getting more and more cautious. Now, I know the trick. Get a pencil and just... The trick only works if, you know, the person writes with enough pressure. If the person writes lightly, then yeah, it's not going to imprint on the, the paper beneath it. Ah, this lovely Aubusson City. In excellent condition. Restart the bidding. The three Once. of you together. Now, that's 1, a picture only twice. Charles Adams could draw. What possessed you to come blundering in here like this? Could it be an overpowering interest in art? Yes, the art of survival. She puts her heart into her work. In fact, her whole body. So then to Mr. Van Dam at 700. Oh, Mr. Van Dam. Has anyone ever told you that you overplay your various roles rather severely, Mr. Kaplan? Seems to me you fellows could stand a little less training from the FBI and a little more from the actor's studio. Ah, FBI. Am I to be dropped into a vat of molten steel and become part of a new skyscraper? Start the bidding. Mr. Mr. Kaplan, we've had just about enough of you. Ooh, the guy's there. The FBI guy. Well, good night, sweetheart. Don't think it wasn't nice. Say to 12. They could easily kill him by showing the knife again, you know? Put the glove on, show the knife, and boom, he's dead. Uh, a knife in the back. What is your pleasure? How much to start? 1500 well, the bid is already up to twenty-two fifty, sir. Uh, how do we know it's not a fake? It looks like a fake. One thing we know, you're no fake. You're a genuine idiot. Thank you. <laughs> we'll say twelve fifty. His plan worked. That's Thank you. Better leave, sir. You take your hands off me, or I'll sue you. Oh, sorry, old man. Too bad. Keep trying. <laughs> well, I want to thank you, gentlemen, for saving my life. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Chicago police capture United Nations killer. Congratulations, man. Yeah. <laughs> Roger. Code 76. The guy's flabbergasted. Like, what? Is this guy just... <laughs> Let's just capture him. Come again? You sure? He's using the phone while driving the car. Where are we going? Airport. I want to be taken to police headquarters. I'm a mad killer on the loose. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Northwest. Oh, Northwest is an actual place. This way, Mr. Cornell. Oh, we haven't much time. You're a police, aren't you? Or is it FBI? 
FBI, CIA, ONI. Oh, where are we going? New York or Washington? Rapid City, South Dakota. Rapid mm. City? What for? Tell me, what's Van Dam up to? He's a sort of importer, exporter. Of what? Government secrets, perhaps. Hmm. Then what are we going there for? Set so his mind at ease about George Kaplan. Well, there is no such person as George Kaplan. I tried on his clothes. He's got short sleeves and dandruff. He doesn't exist. Which is why I'm going to have to ask you to go on being him for the next 24 hours. Yeah, they're going to make him the real George Kaplan. Once found out, they're as good as dead. Thanks to you, clouds of suspicion are already forming. I'm an advertising man, not a red herring. I've got a job, a secretary, two ex-wives, and several bartenders dependent upon me. And I don't <laughs> intend to disappoint them all by getting myself killed. Well, I don't suppose it would matter to you that you were probably forced to do whatever she did in order to protect herself? Protect herself from what? Exposure and assassination. Mm-hmm. I was right. Oh, no. I know you didn't mean it, but I'm afraid you have put her in an extremely dangerous situation. So he said yes, he will be the decoy, the red herring. I don't like the way Teddy Roosevelt is looking at me. I think he's trying to tell me not to go through with this hair brain scheme. He doesn't know to what extent you are the cause of our present trouble. It is your responsibility to help us restore her to Van Damme's good graces right up to the point he leaves the country tonight. But after tonight, my blessings on you both. Oh, is he going to pretend to get killed by Eve? Imagine Eve shoots him, bam, oh, he dies. And so Van Damme's faith in Eve is restored. Good afternoon, Mr. Captain. Not her. I suppose you were surprised to get my call. Not at all. I knew the police would release you, Mr. Captain. I not only know the exact time you're leaving the country tonight and your ultimate destination, perhaps you'd be interested in the price. The price? For doing nothing to stop you. I want the girl. I want the girl to get what's coming to her. She really did get under your skin, didn't she? What made you arrive at the deduction that my feelings for Miss Kendall deteriorated to the point where I would trade her in for peace of mind? I don't deduce. I observe. <laughs> now he's acting like a professional calm spy. Just a second, you. You little fool. Stay away from me. <laughs> oh. she did shoot him now van damme doesn't have to worry about george kaplan anymore all right not a bad plan it was executed really fast too mr thornton hello hello all in the line of duty i did treat you miserably i used some pretty harsh words i'm sorry they hurt deeply in the cafeteria, when you fell, when I shot you with the blanks. You did it rather well, I thought. Yeah, I thought I was quite graceful. I met Philip Van Damme at a party one night and saw only his charm. The professor and his Washington colleagues approached me with a few sort of details about Philip. My relationship with him made me uniquely valuable to them. I see. That's her story. She learned to be a spy on the job. She had no prior training. I've got to get back to the house and convince them that I took the long way around so nobody followed me. After your malevolent friend Van Damme takes off tonight, you and I are going to get together and do a lot of apologizing to each other in private. Well, he has told you, hasn't he? She's going off with Van Damme tonight on the plane. I mean, of course. That's obvious, right? But you said... I needn't tell you how valuable she can be to us over there. I don't like the games you play, Professor. War is hell, Mr. Thornhill, even when it's a cold one. Perhaps you ought to start learning how to lose a few cold wars. I'm afraid we're already doing that. City Hospital, in critical condition, has been tentatively identified... You feeling all right? Oh, yeah, considering your driver has a sledgehammer for a hand. Oh. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I've begun to forget her already. Good. Everyone's been cooperating beautifully. Now you can include me. I'm a cooperator. I'm most great. I'd like a drink. Can you give me a, give me some bourbon? <laughs> bourbon. <laughs> he still locked the door. Of course he's not going to trust him just because of his words. Luckily he doesn't have acrophobia. Stop. Oh, excuse me. Stop. <laughs> well, that 
tone changed really quick. Stop! Stop! <laughs> oh, good one. Sure you don't want me to take you up there? No, thanks. Never mind, this is fine. Oh, thanks. He has a lot of cash for, on him. I mean, he's been using up his money for days and it still hasn't run out. Well, he probably stopped by an ATM or something. Wait, do they have ATMs back then? I don't even know. Hmm. Even if he saves her and they escape, the FBI still can't pin Mr. Van Damme for his import and export of government secrets. Oh, even the maid is here. But I just didn't know what I was doing. He wanted to destroy you. You had to protect yourself. I wonder if I might have a few words of parting with you, sir. Well, Leonard, I was going to say goodbye to one's right arm. He's leaving Leonard behind. In your case, sir, I'm afraid you're going to wish you had cut it off sooner. Oh, is this a betrayal? Did he just throw the little shaver? That was probably his cufflinks or something. You must have had some doubts about it yourself. Why else would you have decided not to tell a treasure here has a belly full of microfilm? She shot him in a moment of fear and anger. Thereby wrapped everything up into one very neat and tidy bundle. I think you're jealous. No, I mean this, and I'm very touched. Very. Oh, betrayed by your own right-hand man. I found it in her luggage. Oh no. Shoot one of your own people to show that you're not one of them. He still punched him. Hurry on down, darling. It's almost time to leave. In a moment. She's compromised. Oh no. This matter is best disposed of from a great height. He's really gonna make her jump off the plane. Okay, it's a good thing that Roger is there. Didn't Roger also say something about jumping off a plane? I guess that was foreshadowing. Oh, I think he can be a great rock climber. Ah, oh, just five seconds too late though. They're on to you. I'm in your room. Ooh, curious to see how he's gonna pass that to her. Without arousing any suspicion. He's really learning how to be a spy now. That's pretty cool. One of my most valuable attributes is it now turns out. Oh, she didn't see it! Oh! Oh no, 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 no! Oh, thank goodness. Well, we better get moving. Oh, I think I left my earrings upstairs. I'll be right down. They know all about the fake shooting. They're going to do away with you. The figure that they got at the auction sale last night is filled with microfilm. That's how he's been getting it. Hello. Whatever you do, don't get on that plane. You and your husband will be over the Canadian border by tomorrow morning. Thank you very much, sir. So they've been smuggling it through the auction. Oh, careless. Stay where you are. Oh, she has a gun. As soon as the plane leaves, my husband and Mr. Leonard will be back. Oh, it looks like a painting suddenly. Say goodbye to my sister for me. Thank her for her superb performance, Miss Johnson. Mm -hmm. Get that figure back from her. What exactly happened? The housekeeper had me pinned down for five minutes before I realized it was that same silly gun of yours. Oh, it's... they're blanks. What are you stopping for? Just ram through the damn padlocks. It's not even your car. Just ram through it. <laughs> they're gonna climb down Mount Rushmore? What do we do? Climb down. We can't. How? Here they come, we have no choice. Oh, chase on Mount Rushmore. Well, if we ever get out of this alive, let's go back to New York on the train together. All right? <laughs> is that a proposition? Yes, it is. What happened to the first two marriages? My wives divorced me. They said I led two dollar life. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> 
Oh, he's all right. Oh man, he's scaling a much more harder path. <laughs> I thought he was really gonna fall to his death. Oh. Oh no! He's right there! Oh! Ah, uh, the knife guy. <gasps> oh no, how is he gonna get her? Help! Help me! Why would he do that? Yeah, that's what I thought. That wasn't very sporting, using real bullets. I can't make it! Yes, you can. Come along, Mrs. Thornhill. Oh, they skipped the entire thing. Well, at least I'm glad she survived because I just watched a woman fall to her death in Vertigo. So, <laughs> if she had actually fallen, uh, I would feel really upset, but <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised with Hitchcock, you know? I guess it does make sense that the FBI are there because they found out that uh, Roger escaped. So they knew that he would be going after the Van Damme. So then they go there. Thankfully, they're there just in time to save them. All in the nick of time. To think that all this entire movie happened just because Roger went and called the the, the boy. I don't even know what the, who the boy was, like a waiter or something. And then the two goons mistook him for Kaplan because the boy was looking for George Kaplan at the time. If that hadn't happened, then Eve Kendall's cover wouldn't have been blown. But at the same time, they would also have not discovered that they were smuggling the microfilms through these sculptures that they buy from the auction. So I guess it all turned out pretty well. If that had happened to me though, I would already have been dead inside a car at the bottom of the ocean because I probably wouldn't even be able to navigate the car while drunk. Or even if I survived that, then well then I would be I would go on with my life because I would not bother visiting room what 796 and to find out who George Kaplan was, I'll be like, yeah good riddance, I'm I'm safe, I survived. I'm not gonna go find out all this stuff. I'm just gonna go back to my life. Thank you very much. Did we learn any lesson from that incident? Hmm, not really, because there's no way to clarify your real identity with people who don't even believe the words coming out of your mouth. Van Damme believed that Roger was Kaplan, so no matter what Roger says, he's not gonna convince Van Damme. So there's nothing he can really do about that situation. Well, one thing we can take away from the movie, though, is that if someone is overly nice to you and the person is a complete stranger and you are a murderer, at least you're labeled a murderer by the newspapers, and then a stranger just saves you and be really, really nice to you, then you have to be very, very suspicious. I mean, don't get me wrong. I know there are very nice, kind people in the world, but it's better to stay on the safe side and be very, very suspicious if that ever happens to you. What would you have done if you were in Roger Tornhill's shoes? Let me know down in the comments. Oh, and remember uh, to let me know also if you would like me to watch James Bond movies. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.